Achtung, Achtung. Hello, everyone. Do you know where that came from? I'm sure there's other many uses, but in um, the Third Reich and in broadcasting, maybe somebody knows. If you've watched enough of my videos and remember, you would know. All right. Well, hey, um, of course, we're going to be playing some Hearts of Iron Force, World of Blaze mod, seeing how it's going. This is, you know, Gamer1745 here. If you would, like the videos. And hey, guys, please, please, please post a comment. Anything. Just saying hi is cool. Really, really helps me out a lot. All right. A couple of things I wanted to sort of explain. Near term, we are sending these guys down to here. These guys are already over here. We're going to see about doing an airborne invasion of Cyprus. Seeing what we can do with that. We are getting a lot of units a little better shuffled around um, here for um, Barbarossa that's coming soon, TM. Uh, don't know what we're doing about Finland and the, these guys up in Norway, but we will see. Um, yeah. Oh, let's see. I wanted to... Okay. I'm a little concerned about these. And the um the command power. You know, 20 for donuts commerce rating, 15 for raider, fine. And I guess, you know, this is added in the base game, not but obviously mods can mod it. If we were to, you know, do three more uh, military high commands, well, three more. Okay, that's 30 points, 30. If we do one of these historical, somebody like that, okay, there's 50. So now we're down to 50 points. Well, we don't, not for the air theorist or whatever. Okay, so now we're down to, you know, 50 points off of this. That would... I mean, with just 35 possible command points stored up at any one time, you know, max out of 20, or out of 200, I mean. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. What's the purpose? Um... To keep me from having a historical leadership? Now, I get the idea, you know, command power, similar to political power. So you're not constantly min-maxing, constantly swapping around leadership elements. I get that. I, I really do. And... We, we are going to go with uh, Ernst Udet here, uh, which will give us um, close support ground attack plus 10%. He was a dive bomber enthusiast. And that leaves us with 69. Um, there was, well, I don't think I have enough. What was the other thing I was thinking about doing here before starting the episode? Um, was it even a decision-oriented thing? Probably, but I don't remember. Um, oh, yes. I guess I'm going to, and it's going to really get into it. <laughs> yes, I see why suicide pills, to get rid of these guys so you can recruit somebody else. But we're going to do Spymaster to try to get a few more slots here so that we can use them most, or at least I'm going to use them for, um, you know, uh, counterinsurgency type or, um, resistance and have them root out resistance because we're going to be. Well, I, I think this, you know, 52, no, this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
Oh, this is coming from various readings, including Hitler's Empire, which is a very good book. Um, okay, now. Talks about the occupation of Poland. Let's see here. This. Time to completion, 42 days. I mean, locks. Okay, yeah, so, so we're getting close. Okay, 42 days. Wow. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So we got it. And we got to get that obviously beforehand. Um, obviously just, is there anything else here that I need to sort, uh, not that couldn't be useful, but really sort of need to do. Uh, no. So let's prepare Barbara. Infrastructure, air base, and we're adding around. Okay. Now we also have um, these here. Slightly more agitated, slightly more agitated, slightly more agitated. Okay. There is definite concerns by the um, the army but not the Wehrmacht okay um, I, I look I, I know a bunch of you guys are German that um, that view my channel. I know a bunch of you guys are um, big experts on World War II as well in Europe. But I also have to view the audience because um, I do know so that there are people new to the field, you know, um, uh, that come in and so don't know everything. Wehrmacht basically means um, your armed forces. So it includes the um the kriegsmarine the um krieg um is sort of war battle marine so you know the navy but um you know marine as in you know things out at sea it incur includes the luftwaffe the air force and um of course the army or the or the hares which is the army, and I'm sure I'm butchering some of these words for proper German pronunciations, but live with it, guys. Laugh with, laugh at me if you wish. Uh, so there was no real concern in the Luftwaffe, which was at its core a national socialist organization, not just because Goering's heading it up, but Goering is, um, who was, of course, a national socialist, but he's building a national socialist organization. The Navy. My appreciation, not so national socialist, but especially in the pre-war era, is um, uh, very appreciative of Hitler because Hitler is giving resources to the Navy and the Navy wants to build up. So it is reasonably loyal to the, um, you know, National Socialist regime. And, and I've talked about this, and I'm not going to go into it here, but every part of life is being national socialized, if you will. Um, every organization, every organization, a local gardening and flower society somewhere not in like in the national ones which they were too but i don't know you know i'm just trying to find a small um the regensburg you know horticulturalist society or whatever it would be in german um would have to become a national so in line with national socialism i somewhere i i save a lot of stuff was like advertising and brochure to something like that organization, you know, flower show kind of thing. And, you know, that it's national socialist and, and it's not just 
like, oh, you've got to exclude the Jews. It's more than that, you know, but every part of society is over time being national socialized. A lot of organizations, including the government, including things like the diplomatic corps, you know, starting in, you know, um, in 1932, are not national socialists. Sure, there are national socialists in the organization around, and there's a lot of people that are going, yeah, okay, national socialism, you know, whatever. They're not that concerned about it because there's a lot of traditionalists, and there's a lot of, you know, I wouldn't say there was a lot of communists in these organizations in Germany in 1932 and in government organizations, but there were, you know, social democrats, there were a lot of, you know, various other political thoughts in, you know, government bureaucracies, shall we say. Well, over time, they are being more and more national socialized. The Navy is generally loyal to the Hitler regime because Hitler is fulfilling the goals of the Navy of, you know, rebuilding it. But it, at its core, is not run by diehard ideological national socialists. Where the Luftwaffe is. The army, similarly, there are people like Reichnau and others that are diehard national socialists um, that are in high-ranking positions. But people by, like von Rundstedt, I don't think he's a national socialist. He's a nationalist. He may even be, you know, a hardcore nationalist or ultra-nationalist or, or words, you know, words to that effect. But he, and, you know, he, I would say, is no more loyal to Hitler than, um, you know, just as a political leader who's, who is getting the job done. You know, he is not um, ideologically you know, like, 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 you know, messianically, you know, as in a messiah type figure, loyal to Hitler. He is not, as far as I can tell. And um, Rommel, who does know Hitler very well, um, this is one thing that I don't know how many people are aware of, because Hitler spends considerable time, I'm not Hitler, sorry, Rommel spends considerable time as head of the army bodyguard, personal bodyguard for Hitler. Um, this is bef just before he gets the Seventh Panzer Division. He is um, been commanding because there's also an SS guard as well. But he is in charge of the the army detachment that guards Hitler, and he's talking to Hitler. That's why he gets a Panzer Division because Guder or no, Rommel, unlike Guderian and these other figures, Rommel has not been to any Panzer schools. He is not part of the Panzer, you know, emerging Panzer Corps. Rommel, you know, has his book, Infantry Attacks, and he's been in mostly Bavarian mountain units in World War I, so he's, you know, noted as a, you know, a mountain forces commander. But he's talking to Hitler about, you know, the panzers and influencing Hitler in a positive way about panzers and trusting, because Hitler is not an inherently a panzer. He's an infantry um, corporal. But, you know, and, and knowledgeable of warfare in, from the infantry perspective. And he's talking up these panzers. And that gets him his appointment to a newly created panzer division because of his association with Hitler. But again, I don't think there's any... I, I think it's more, you know, toadying up to, hit, to Hitler to get the um, appointment. Not that he has any great love or... Um, belief in um, national socialism. It just, he is, you know, a, a German traditionalist, a German nationalist, sure. But, you know, so the army is not, now it is becoming more and more over time, national socialized, but it is not a national socialist organization where the Luftwaffe is, ideologically. Now, there is negotiations between the army and the SS, mainly on the topic of um, manpower, and that the idea of membership in the SS fulfills military duty, meaning you can't go and draft an SS man. You can, and they do, and millions of them are, 
um, SA men are drafted into the army. Hitler is very much approving of this because this is one of the steps, at least for the rank and file viewpoint, he becomes more comfortable with the idea because he doesn't think the, he thinks the army is less likely to revolt against him because there's now millions of SA men filtered throughout the army. Whether they would have followed orders to do a coup against Hitler or not, I don't know. I'm sure there's some that wouldn't. I'm sure there are some that would. I just don't know where the percentage lies, you know, kind of thing. You know, when you're in a platoon of everybody wearing gray and the, the you know, the officers and the, the NCOs come out and say, we're going to go, you know, march into this town and arrest these people, you know, and that they're wearing brown, you know, um, National Socialist, whether they're um, SA or, you know, the... Um, the party functionary, you know, did also wear brown, um, you know, go arrest all these people. Are they going to, is someone going to turn around and shoot that officer? Well, in probably some cases they might. Um, other cases, well, they don't, you know, they may know who some of the SA men are standing around, but there's a lot of other people that are just going to follow orders. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how reliable the army becomes. I don't, you know, Hitler though does, very much think it becomes more reliable at that point. So, but basically, so whether you are in the, you know, sort of the Algemeine or General SS, whether you're in the Totenkopf type units, which include, of course, the camp guards um, in the SS, or in the, in this, I'm talking like in the early days, um, or in the, you know, the Waffen SS, the armed SS, you're no longer subject to, you know, you, you are in essence in the military, um, even though some of those units are at thought at distinctly not military units. The general SS are not a military formation. Yeah, by the time, you know, they're marching on Berlin, those guys have been, you know, passed out guns and told to you know, go to the barricades, but they're not, um, you know, fighting units. So... With all of this, and particularly with the Waffen SS, there are manpower limits that are put on with these negotiations. How big can the Waffen SS be? And so it's not, and this is one of the reasons why the SS, these better, you know, like, um, you know, Das Reich and, uh, and Liebstandart SS um, are thought of as elite units is because their um, sort of manpower size has has a limitation on it. But, but, that's just their top number. You know, how, how big they can be. Not how many men can go into it. So when they go into battle, full of national socialist zeal, fighting, you know, the Untermunch in the Eastern Front and whatnot, and they, ha they ta ha take high casualties... They get replacements because it's the sort of, you know, how many men are in these units is what is being uh, monitored, not the turnover rate, the casualty rate, the replacement rate in these units. So an army unit, well, they may be down at, you know, 60%, 70% strength and, not, and getting minimum trickle of replacements where the Waffen SS units, the, especially the premier ones, are constantly getting a flow of new manpower replacing their their strength. But because of these limitations that are negotiated in, that it can't get bigger than a certain amount, only affect people that are German citizens, shall we say, Germans being in there. So some of the very earliest are um, right around this time period, um, that are recruited in, when they're literally move, literally moving through Hungary, there's a lot of German communities. Some SS units are recruiting. Just as you want to join up? Yeah, get, get you know, obviously you know, yeah, get on the truck right now. Yeah, you you want to join? Yeah, get on the truck. You know, and not not talking. And these are Hungarian citizens here, um, not talking to them about stealing some of their. I mean, stealing is not as in their kidnapping, but taking away manpower. From their armies, they're not doing any sort of racial checks on these people. 
Um, that may come later, but normally not, because I don't know that they have that kind of, you know, records. But they're, you know, the the Volksdeutsch, the 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 German folk and other, you know, outside of Germany proper. You know, you speak enough German, you look you look German enough to them, whatever you know, their racial identity ideas. They're recruiting you. That's where it starts. It also um, fairly quickly comes along with, you know, um, Northwest European types, uh, you know, um, Dutch, Scandinavians, racial groups, and this is where a lot of them come into Viking division, Viking, um, that are being foreign, foreign recruitment. Because foreign recruitment does not count against the size of the Waffen-SS. This is German manpower. So whether you're a German from outside of Germany, from, you know, from somewhere in Russia, from somewhere in Hungary, or even someplace like Ukraine, that doesn't count. Um, or if you are Dutch, Flemish, you know, um, Norwegian, or a lot of Swedes um, join, hundreds of Swedes join. Um, and so if you're those types of people, they don't count against the total. We're going to take these active for 30 effects when removed. Slightly more. Okay, this becomes slightly more. Um, influence, attitude, loyal. Okay, you can see loyal, friendly, calm. Well, you know, worried. I don't know from... You know, SS recruitment here. It really ever affects that much. But um, but we'll get um, SS Motor Division Nederland, um, Vinking for Norway, though there were lots of Swedes, but it was sort of... And, and Vinking was a mix of um, uh, one German regiment and the rest were sort of foreigners. And Denmark, oh, well, um, what, oh, is it both, I don't know, both two Vinkings, hmm. well, no, we'll start with two of these, two. Okay, so. Nederland, what does this look like? Okay, well, this is, you know, the SS Motor Division Nederland, yeah, which is a bit later. But, yeah, okay, so we're getting this. Um, we're just going to, you know, equip out with that. Very good. We've got the equipment. Nothing particularly missing. I mean, they're still building up. Oh, support equipment is, I do know, um, not fully here. And some of that is right there that they need. But we're hopefully catching up. Also, another thing I have done. Let's come here. Um... Some of the Panzer Divisions have become Panzer Division 2 um, because I've added a um, section. Because if I did it to all, I don't have enough, and I don't want to not have enough to slow up the, some of these divisions. So um, a few of them have gotten uh, more APCs to try to make them a bit better. A few of the divisions. Okay, fuel, well, we're going to lose all of our, all of our Soviet-based fuel when Barbarossa starts. We can, of course, try to get, replace some of that with 
Italian fuel, uh, general government, I don't know if it's worth a factory to get three, but it may become that. Desperate. We do have more than enough rubber. Okay, we can, I because we can see here we have more than enough rubber. So let's free up a couple of factories. Help us out. And let's also see about bring up that. Okay. Now I'm hoping that is we still have enough steel for all of our needs after doing that. We've got rubber. Okay. And I I don't know what to expect with Barbarossa. I know one of the people. I love you guys who comment. Sometimes, though, I, I don't remember exactly who's commenting on what um, was asked. I said I'm a bit worried. I don't, you know... If, you know, because I don't know how good my intel is, let's let's see if we can start flying some of these guys over at Bell. Um, I think they'll provide some better intel. Even when we're at peace? I don't know. I, okay, so, you know, I definitely was prepared for the idea that we're just obviously seeing a um, you know tank image here but I don't know if it's a tank in stacks of infantry really okay this 42 days unlocks decision activate okay so that just unlocks the decision which is good one battle one will one destiny Wow, host wall, host legions, effect, oh, a lot of manpower, basically, okay. There's Eastern Front Laban's Rum, obviously, yes. Recruit from the Hitler Youth, City Festungs, recruit from the Hitler Youth, okay, yeah, that's later. Um, Volkstrom Battalions. Again, just looking around, I think we are going to be doing. Yeah, let's do this. Get this going. Well, we have recruiting in Norway going through 23 days. Ah, assume full control over Norwegian iron. Cost for this decision. Mm. Well, um, yeah, there's we're we're getting um. Resource map. Um, fixed on core. We're getting a good chunk of it. Or, I mean, they're getting it. We could, of course, not have to trade for it. Um, huh. Okay, well, we'll maybe wait a little bit on that. Okay, um, let's give him to Elza. 
get these guys over to there. Yeah, I just don't know what to expect coming up here. Am I just going to be, you know, slamming into a brick wall, or is this going to be a quick, quickly crumbling situation to... to these forces? Now, down here, we are here. Okay, you. Um, well, let's see. Let's come over to... Uh, let's try. Here. Right. Now, oh, um, we do have more planes there than we can deal with, or effectively. Well, okay, I'm going to save this. Just if this immediately goes bad, I may change my mind. Yes, you know, you guys, um, well, hey, live with the consequences, and I get that, but partially what I'm doing here is just learning experiment here. Um, so... Activate. Oh, still uh, planning inferior enemy. Okay, well, let's look here. Um, well, now let's look over here. Okay, we're catching up with support equipment. Good. We're doing a lot of support equipment production. Okay, tactical bombers, the only thing that we're actually behind, though, I like patrol craft, attackers, we got enough to put up another thing, but we've got rubber, and we've got aluminum for the moment, and we can't stockpile too much of that, so, um, Which one are we down? I, I get, sorry, I get confused. Which are the strike bombers and tactical? Okay, HE are the tactical bombers, strike bombers are the JU-88s. Now, okay, and we are low on the tactical bombers. So those are the HE-111s. Now that I know that, figure that out. Okay, so then let's do two factories on that to get that going i know we only had one free but we're building more factories okay we should because yes building this is being damaged i'm thinking by um insurgency because we're winning the air war mostly here good um so we'll just let that sort of continue and um we're doing well we've got well maybe we sh i don't know we'll see what we do um, try to do it in the sort of higher developed zones. We'll put in a couple of more factories. Improved medicine, great. Um, which will help with trickle back. Uh, well, I always want to check. Okay, so we could air, ba air bases enables building up higher levels, which is nice, but you know, 
Maybe not the best priority for us at the moment is all. Not that it isn't a good priority. Uh, we could do that. Oh, well, you know, one thing I want to do here is... Um, okay, we are doing the Stugs. Good. Um, that's her not yet. The grill, not yet. The flat, good. Yay, good. Don't know how useful that is, but we could. Uh, mortar to... Panzer three fifty millimeter black. All right. Well, let's let's do the long barreled. Maybe more useful than some of these others. Okay, improved condors, good, and that will allow us to come over here and do well other short barreled. Panzer fours, infantry support tank. Um, production, we want to. Where are they? There. We want to. It's, this will be a small, hopefully, only a small variant. There we go. Change. Get the improved version out. Okay, well, no, they're probably back here. Yeah, these guys, I want to... Get you to do some reconnaissance over here. Why aren't we firing? Uh... Um, because we only have 100. Okay, where I think I sent the others up to Berlin here. Didn't know just how many I needed. Um, so let's move another 100 transports down here. Maybe I could do it with just one division, but... Does it tremendously change the diplomatic status with us? Cancel lemmings. Okay, yeah, they were sending us some anti-tank guns or something. We needed them, so we accepted them, even though they were Italian. Roosevelt, British attack at Mir's al -Kabir which was attacking the French fleet in North Africa, personal democracy speech. Oh, how are we doing here? Okay, we've pushed out to there, or they pushed us back to here, but honestly, that may have been lack of supplies. Um, yeah, I'm just letting this sit there. Yeah. Now. Now. We activate now. Okay. Oh, British Iraq War. Everybody joining in. Airplanes. Right. Okay, yes, we have these guys. Oh, click to activate. Go. Not like we need to wait more time, is there? Oh. Okay. Crash all plans. Let's, oh no, okay, hold it, cancel. No. Let's just select one division. Um. Okay. 
so. Wait, wait, wait. Not a valid province for, for the province needs to have at least 50 transport planes. Yes, we have, we have, um, okay, uh, are these guys thinking they're doing something? Old airways standing by. These guys are saying they're air supplying, so hold hold that. Hold their wings. Is that the problem? Before okay, there we go. Oh, we captured the British operative. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, pause, 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 pause. Uh, you can invite to faction. Okay, well, they want to add. Okay, yes, we'll accept them asking. Research slots available. Great. Spies research. Okay, and we have better artillery. Or something. Okay. Um, better, cheaper, or whatever. So let's go with better ones. Get those going. Because we don't have air support over here. I'm thinking that may be it. Right. Well, what do we want to produce? What do we, well, what do we need? I mean, there's what we want to and what we need to produce. I think this grind or is going to become a grind on the Eastern Front. So. And I'm just sticking with these older weapons, and let's uh, increase production there. Produce better heavy artillery, and, or research it, I should say. Um, yeah, we could do flat towers as well. And how much? Okay. Um, the surgeon strength and resistance effectiveness. Safe cracker. Escape artist. Natural orator. Stage coup costs. Revolutionary. Raider. Commando. Specialty hungry there. Uh, trader. Well, rescue operative. Well, do we try to do a rescue operative? It will be killed if not rescued with it. Okay, good. Hopefully, he just dies so we can replace him. Um, well, might as well get somebody with more skill. And we're going to um, no, no resource map, resistance map. Um, Root out resistance, that's what we're looking for. Um, yeah, let's do it there.
because we can look over here and that's down at 25 and 20s here and I think compared to some of the others I think he's doing good Oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Because I, I, what? Because I know one of the things it said. Oh, hey, you didn't have enough when I clicked the hovered over here. Um, you didn't have enough uh, air cover. Death of Rudolph S. Uh oh. Made a plan value of the plan. Advantage now for the map to desire. Okay, well, I don't know. Oh, okay. Send volunteers. Who wants to send two divisions and their air wings to help us out. Very good. Uh, volunteer transport. Okay, well, hmm. what do we want to build? Well, I think, I don't know if we can ever have too much oil. So let's, let's get some, another oil plant, synthetic oil plant coming along. Also help with the rubber. Uh, you know, yeah, now we're not using our Panzer divisions. We're not flying a lot of our, um, you know, air forces and we're not using a lot of our Navy. So that could all shoot up at more cost. But right now, of course, we are, um, acquiring more oil than we're using up. I, th oh, well, yeah, this is an area that is somewhat neglected. Do have that for the east, but could be better. Should have maybe done done a long time, but we're right, right now. Let's let's do this, and let's do this. That will help there, obviously. Um, Well, see where we currently have it, which, which is fairly good. This would be helpful, and that would be helpful out there. Um, All right, we'll produce one here. Let's let's move it to the top. Expedite its deployment to hopefully come and help us know about things and cover before once the war gets going with them in the east. Because there's two of them, so let's let's come back here. Let's trash all orders, delete all orders. Let's select one division. Let's put that. Oh, did this before. Okay. Um, come here. Click these guys. Um, we want to. Click here, and we want to hold all air wings so they're all standing by that. Then come here and collect this one division. 
Click that, and now that is not. Um, But if I tag both of the divisions here, no, I don't know. Old man gets confused, yells at Sky. Why the hell are you making this so complicated? Yeah, oh, I know. Air, air launch, air operations are a complicated thing. Okay, well, we did the. Recruitment, where is my SS division? Mm, like, what, was it the Netherlands? Or the, yeah, um, it was Norwegian. Is it up here? No, I think it was 15 before that. Before, where's my Vinking division? Oh, it's Vinking. Oh, it's not Vinking. So I thought it said, I thought it said Vinking, but it, Geberg's, Geberg's Jaeger Division, um, Nord, right, okay, good, um, there we go, that is, now, uh, I wish, at least, <laughs> they've got to some idea on this, I wish they'd just go back and Institute the old system with just minor improvements. Okay, wild collection of equipment. No rocket artillery, no assault guns. Well, that's, we haven't either produced or researched that. All right, well, okay, since we did that, let's um, just take a quick look. Okay, they seem loyal. It's, yeah, okay. I mean, they're not getting upset. Uh, Wehrmacht becomes slightly more. That that's going to be vinking, I guess. Right. Well, I don't want these episodes to get too long. I know I talk a lot. No, a lot of hasn't happened time-wise. But hey, um, hopefully it was interesting and fun. I want to thank Tim, Strongarm, Niagara, Timothy, Sir Toyjet, Gary, Garrett, Marcus, and of course the Hoffmanator for all your support over on. Patreon, but everyone else, like I just say, hey, if you can just like the videos and post a comment, that's all I actually ask people to do. So thank you all. I just want to appreciate those that support the channel with that extra little bit. See you next time for more. Yes, more Hearts of 